everyone, it's me again, and welcome to Faith's Finds. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my little corner of the internet. My name is Faith Grenade, and I put makeup videos here on YouTube most of the time. And you should subscribe and hit that little bell icon down below. It'll notify you every time I upload so you don't miss a minute of this riveting action. I think it's honestly been over a month since I actually put makeup on my face and filmed it. Like, is this even a beauty channel anymore? I don't know. You've stumbled across Faith's finds, and <laughs> this week, as will be the case for the next few weeks, I am extremely busy. Uh, long story short, I'm actually getting attuned for um, my Reiki Master Teacher certification this weekend, so I will be away from the house all weekend. I'm going up north, and I'm gonna be staying in a hotel there, so I'm not really sure, like, how much I'm gonna be able to do while I'm there. I'm gonna be very, very busy. Then the show, the stage show that I'm doing makeup for uh, opens <laughs> um, next week. So I'll be doing that. And then I also recently got another job, yay. Um, because as you guys know, my last job fell through and I just recently, completely out of the blue, got another job. Um, I'll be working at Ulta Beauty, and I'll be happy to talk about that process at some point, but I start that, I think, the week after that, and I still have to film for the skin games. It's a whole thing. Basically, I think in the entire month of March, I have like one or two days off that whole month. Uh, everything else, I, every other day, I'm doing something. It's all exciting. It's just taken up a lot of my time. So you guys are going to be seeing a lot more lifestyle videos on this channel. You're going to be seeing a lot of unboxings, a lot of hauls, just because it's what I can do. You know, it's what I have time to sit down and do. So I really hope that's okay with you guys. You guys seem to be really enjoying the metaphysical videos. Um, I know I did a haul of a mystery box from Sage Goddess and you guys really liked that. So that's awesome. Today, I thought I would do a haul from my local metaphysical store. Um, I did a haul already. I've done a couple of hauls from Sage Goddess, which is an online metaphysical retailer, but I do have a local local crystal shop uh, that I shop with and I went there yesterday because I had a coupon that was going to expire so I got some things and I thought I would show you guys what I got and how things compare between the online retailer and my local shop. Now, when I say local, the shop is an hour and 20 minute drive away from me so Local is relative, but it is the biggest crystal and metaphysical supply store in my area. It's called the Crystal Fox. It's in Laurel, Maryland, and they are fantastic. I absolutely love them. The guys there are super nice. Uh, everyone who works there is awesome. And they always have some kind of neat little nifty thing hiding in there somewhere. And I think as fun as it is to shop on Sage Goddess and as many different varieties of things that Sage Goddess has, there's something about walking into your local crystal shop that is just so special. The smells, the sounds, the, the sights, the energy of everything around you, you know, being able to touch and feel and hold and get a feel for things is very special. So I highly encourage you guys, if you do have a local crystal store near you, stop by and visit. I mean, these are usually independently owned stores and they rely on the patronage of folks like us. So yeah, that's your, that's your sort of PSA for the day. Let's get into the haul. As I just said, I recently got a new job. So I want to make a grid for success in my job, you know, prosperity, focus, all of the things that I want to bring with me into this job because it is going to be a very demanding position compared to other jobs I've had. So I really want to step up to the plate, really want to get that productivity energy, that passion energy, that fire um, working for me in that job. And one of the ways to channel energy is to make crystal grids or altar spaces. So basically, you know, spaces that are decorated and you know, charged with a certain specific energy toward a certain intention. So I decided I was going to get some things uh, for myself to channel that kind of confident, productive, fiery, passionate energy that I really, really want uh, when I go into this job. So 
yellow is the color of self-confidence. Yellow is the color that symbolizes the solar plexus chakra, which is right above your belly button. It's in the solar plexus, which is your center of fear. But the solar plexus chakra is your center of courage, of bravery, of self-confidence, of self-esteem. All things that are important when you're starting a new job. So I got a yellow candle. This is a pillar candle. I have a green one of these in my... Um, prosperity and abundance altar, which is in my kitchen. But this is a yellow one for the solar plexus chakra. This is going to basically be the centerpiece of my grid. Um, there will be a couple other larger stones with it, but uh, this is going to be kind of the focal point and it brings that fire energy. You can also anoint these candles on the outside or on the inside with essential oil blends to bring water energy into the picture too. Maybe I should make a video of me constructing this grid. Would you guys want to see that? Let me know. To bring in the crystals, uh, I did get a few new crystals. I do have some that are probably gonna end up going in this grid. I have some rutilated quartz that's probably gonna go in there. I have a bunch of other stuff that I wanna put in there, but I did grab a few things um, just to add more to the grid. So first I grabbed a couple of pieces of orange calcite. Uh, orange calcite is the stone of passion. It's a stone of sexual healing. Um, for those of you who have trouble with libido or even recovering from sexual trauma, um, this is a stone of the sacral chakra, which is your center of passion and creativity. And I am going to need a lot of creativity in this job because I'm going to have to find unique ways to approach people and let them know I'm there and hopefully get them in for treatments in the pod that I'll be working in. So this is going to be a wonderful little stone for that as I drop it. Got a couple of golden healer quartz points. Uh, these are quartz that has a certain type of mineral inclusion in it that gives it this slightly golden hue. Some are more gold than others. I do have a sphere of golden healer that is very, very gold. And this one is quite a bit more golden than its counterpart here. But um, these are beautiful for all types of healing. They are gold, so they are the, that yellow self-confidence, self-esteem energy, but they also are great for all types of physical and emotional healing. So you're talking about something that's going to reach into your etheric and energetic bodies and heal any blockages that are standing between you and success. We all have moments of like imposter syndrome, and I was starting to get a little bit of that through the employment process as I was thinking like, oh God, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. They want me to sell a thousand dollars in services a week. How am I ever going to do that? Like, and just, you know, different types of self-doubt. And I, I find that Golden Healer, whether it was intended to heal self-doubt or not, is a great stone for healing self-doubt. And this one even has a little twin on the end. Isn't that cute? Let's get a little twin. Also got a candle snuffer. Um, I never had one of these, and it turns out from what I'm learning from various metaphysical teachers, both online and in person, you, when you're doing ritual and you're working with grids that have candles in them, or you're working with altars that have candles in them, uh, you are actually supposed to snuff the candle out. You're not supposed to blow it out. Um, because obviously we can't leave candles burning forever. We can't leave candles burning while we're asleep. We can't leave candles burning while we're out of the house. It's just not safe. Um, so when you're doing ritual and you have a candle that's supposed to be burning for seven days, eventually you're, you're, you're going to have to snuff it out because it's just not safe to keep a candle burning like that all night. You're going to burn your house down. But if you blow out a candle, that's you pushing your energy onto that candle. So it almost ends the ritual. Um, which isn't what you what you want. You don't want to end the ritual prematurely. You know, you don't want to cancel everything out. So you're supposed to snuff out a candle. And that's why I got this. This was about like five bucks. And honestly, it's so pretty, like so pretty. And it's a nice, easy, safe way to just snuff out a candle. It's nice and long. So it fits inside these pillar candles when they really start getting like down to the brass tacks. So 
I've been needing one for a while. Just went ahead and picked one up. We'll jump over, switch gears a bit to some incense. The coupon I had that was about to expire was like 25% off incense and herbs. So I grabbed some incense sticks. Uh, the first ones are from Nature Nature, pure resin incense, and they're the scent Spiritual Sage. I'm burning, this is the tag that came with the bag, but I'm burning one of them right now and oh my God, it smells so good when you light it. Like when you, when it's in the bag, it sort of just smells like sage, but when you light it and burn it, there is some kind of resin or something in there that smells exactly like the incense they used in my church when I was a kid. Like I'm baptized Eastern Orthodox, so like old school Orthodox Christianity, and they had one of those little baubles on a fucking chain that they swung around and it swung incense smoke everywhere. And these sticks smell exactly like that. It just smells like church in my house right now. Uh, these do have sage in them and sage is the great purifier. Sage purifies your places, spaces, and auras. We talk about smudging with sage all the time. Um, and so it's great and handy to have sage based incense sticks around. That way, if you can't necessarily light up a sage bundle or you're out of sage bundles for whatever reason, or some people are not actually using sage bundles anymore because sage, certain varieties of sage are becoming endangered due to over harvesting. But, um, you know, this is a great alternative to that. You can see there's actual powdered sage on those and these burn forever. <laughs> like, you know, incense sticks normally burn out pretty quickly, but these ones burn for a long time. So I do really like these. This company, Nature Nature, has other flavors of incense, other scents and combinations. I'm definitely interested in trying more from this brand because holy cow, I'm impressed. <laughs> and I got some Crystal Fox brand incense sticks. Uh, my crystal shop, does make their own incense and they have a bunch of different flavors, anything from the metaphysical and the really spiritual to the downright goofy. <laughs> um, so I got two basics because uh, I've never tried their incense before. I got two that I know are pretty much going to be good. Patchouli, I always try to have a patchouli incense stick pack on board in my house at all times. Patchouli is one of my cardinal scents. It is a classic. It's so earthy and woodsy and grounding and connecting. And it connects me to my mom because my mom used to wear patchouli oil all the time. So every time I smell it, I think of her. So then I also got camphor. Camphor is an oil resin type substance uh, that smells like a bonfire. So uh, if, you, if you've if you ever been around a bonfire, that like smoky sort of fiery smell, that's what camphor smells like. I love camphor. Some people aren't into it, but I love it. I love how grounding and stabilizing it is. It sort of gives you that fiery energy of like smolder, like you're ready to take on the world. So I definitely grabbed one of those. And then I also grabbed a goofy flavor. This is called Witch Sticks? Question um, mark? With which spelled W-H-I-C-H instead of W-I-T-C-H. I don't know what's in these uh, <laughs> because they don't say anything about what's in them uh, on the back or anything, but they smelled really good. And I was like, I'll try those out just to grab a goofy flavor that's not so ceremonial um, and just to try them out because, you know, the name Witch Sticks makes me think that it's just like a random amalgam of different resins and oils and herbs and things. Uh, so you never know what you're going to get uh, with those but they had all kinds of goofy flavors. They had a cake scented one. They had one called Macon Bacon Pancakes, which literally smelled like bacon, which is crazy. So now we're moving into sort of the bigger stone pieces, the pieces that I ended up buying uh, that are on the larger side um, and that I only bought one of. So I guess I'll get this one done first. So this is honey calcite. And look at that crystal structure. Is that not insane? It's so cool. Honey calcite is a stone of the solar plexus chakra. Are we noticing a pattern here? It is yellow. Um, so it has all that solar plexus chakra magic, all that good stuff of like self-esteem, self-confidence, courage, bravery, all the good things that you want when you're starting a new job. This is for the grid that I'm going to be building. 
And she does, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but she does have a rainbow in there uh, where some inclusions sort of hit the light just so to make a rainbow when the light hits it. So it's pretty cool. It's a really neatly shaped one. I think they may have picked this up in Tucson. Oh my gosh. Look at how it looks when I hold it in the light. Is that not amazing? That is so cool. Honey calcite was one of the first stones that I ever actually felt energy from. So uh, I used to think that, you know, stones and energy work were kind of hoo-ha, but I could respect why people did it. And then I held a piece of honey calcite for the first time and I actually felt something. Like that was, this was the first type of stone that I ever genuinely felt something from. And this one, I think they picked up in Tucson, I wanna say, because uh, a couple of the people from my crystal shop went to the Tucson Gem Show, which is the biggest gem show in the United States. Uh, massive gem show on my bucket list for sure. But this little guy is, wow, light much? This little guy is called Dragonite. And you can tell, like, there's such an ancient energy to that stone, isn't there? Uh, and you can see the sparkles there. I'll hold it in the light if I can. Can I hold it in the light? There we go. You can sort of see the sparkles there when I hold it in the sunlight. This is a mixture of red and green epidote. Now, epidote is a mineral that comes from, you know, the name epidote comes from the Greek root or the Latin root, uh, meaning, like, to start or to begin. Epidote will present you with new opportunities aggressively. <laughs> like, ready or not, here you come. And I can speak to that because there's a big hunk of green epidote uh, on my prosperity and financial abundance altar in my kitchen. And that altar got my husband his job, I'm convinced. And it got me this new job, whether I was ready for it or not. Was I technically ready for this new job opportunity? No, but it sort of fell into my lap. And that's what Epidote does. Epidote creates new opportunities. Epidote forges a path. It's got green, which of course is the color of money. It's a color of prosperity. It's also a color of the heart chakra. Um, and then it's got kind of a deep red, which is a very grounding color in color magic. And it's just so sparkly. And there was something about it that it felt very ancient to me. It sort of looks like dragon skills, doesn't it? And that was just so special. And as soon as I picked it up and sort of looked at it, I couldn't take my eyes off of it. I was like, all right, usually my rule when going into a crystal shop is if I pick up something twice, it means it's meant to be with me. So <laughs> I picked this one up twice and it is definitely here and fantastic. The last crystal I got was actually a piece of jewelry. It was a pendant and this pendant is made of charoite. Now charoite is this beautiful lavender purple stone. Sometimes it's got some gray and some brown in there as well. Charoite is a stone of being able to see fine details. Uh, it's purple, which is the color of the crown chakra, which is the chakra that's just above your head that connects you to source, God, other realms, that kind of thing. So it does do a lot for that. But I was being called to this stone and I couldn't understand why. Uh, it is a stone of creation of new opportunities. So again, kind of falling in that same epidote line. But even beyond that, it's also a stone that helps you notice little details and be a lot more analytical in your thinking. And that's definitely something that I'm going to have to uh, that's the kind of energy that I'm going to have to carry with me uh, into this new job because this new job involves facial treatments that are significantly shorter uh, than the ones that I normally did in my own practice. So there are some times where I will literally only have 10 minutes to analyze somebody's skin and determine what they need. And in order to successfully do that, I'm going to need to be able to focus and pay attention to the little subtle details very, very quickly. And this stone, from what I've read, helps you to do that. So that would explain why I'm feeling called to it lately. It's such a pretty little oval shape. It'll stack very well with some of the rest of the necklaces I wear all the time. And it is open in the back, which is what you want when it comes to crystal jewelry. You want to look for something that's open in the back. Now, why is that? In order to get the energy from a crystal to the maximum effect, it has to touch your skin. And when you have a piece of jewelry that's closed in the back or has like a metal cover in the back or something, that stone isn't directly touching your skin. When it's open in the back like this, the stone is making contact with your skin all the time. So it's constantly giving you all of that good, good 
energy. And then finally, I was browsing around the tarot cards. A lot of you guys who know me personally know I am a cardomancer. I do tarot readings from time to time. I also do them professionally um, at a pay what you can rate. So basically people pay whatever they are able to pay and I do tarot readings for them. When my husband was unemployed and when I was underemployed, tarot readings pretty much sustained me. So um, I will always have a special place in my life for tarot cards and these. Y'all, I was looking at one of the stacks of tarot decks and a lot of the time I just like sitting in front of the stacks. Like a lot of people ask me, how do I find a tarot deck that's right for me? There are some people that will tell you that your tarot decks have to be gifts. I say, why can't you buy a gift for yourself? I was sitting in front of one of the stacks and I felt like I usually just sit and listen and typically I'll feel something kind of calling out to me if there's anything there. So I just sat there and that's the best part about being in a crystal shop is you can just sit on the floor and listen and no one will judge you. <laughs> Chances are there are other people in the same shop doing the same thing. So I just sort of sat there and waited and I felt something coming from the bottom corner of the of the kind of shelving that I was looking at. The very, very bottom corner tucked into the side, kind of like out of the way, very tiny sort of deck. It's not in one of those big ornate boxes like uh, other decks I have, but I picked it up because it kind of called out to me and I was like, all right, what's your story? And I picked it up and it is the Golden Tarot of the Tsar. Now, let me explain to you guys why this is significant and why I picked these up. This is Eastern Orthodox imagery. As I told you guys earlier in the video, I'm baptized Eastern Orthodox. Like this is a tarot deck that uses imagery from the same religion that I was baptized in. How crazy is that? What are the odds that I would stumble across a deck like this? I mean, there are tarot decks for everything, but I've never seen, not just an Eastern Orthodox tarot deck, but a Russian Orthodox tarot deck. Now, say what you want about Russia. I have my opinions about Russia, goodness knows, but Eastern Orthodoxy was the religion I was baptized in. It was the religion that my grandparents sort of, you know, heavily influenced on us. And we still carry a lot of traditions from Eastern Orthodoxy uh, to this day. Still a lot about Eastern Orthodoxy that sort of connects me to my roots. Um, so even though I do crystal grids and I do all kinds of other pagan stuff and I work with all kinds of different, you know, deities and ascended masters, I still have a place in my spiritual path for Eastern Orthodoxy because it's ancestral magic. And you know, Eastern Orthodoxy, they burn incense. All right. They use crystals. They use oils. They use all kinds of stuff. So it's very, very similar uh, to the pagan roots of Russia and Ukraine in the past. This deck, y'all, is fucking gorgeous. Okay, let me just show you a couple of cards here because these cards are um, basically inspired by iconography, which is art that is used in Eastern Orthodox churches. Uh, it's a very specific kind of artwork um, and there's a lot of kind of detail and very specific instructions to how to do icons, um, which are these, you know, religious images. And there's like, you have to be trained, especially specifically in iconography in order to paint these. And you can see it's metallic. All of the gold foiling up in here is all metallic. So when you hold it up to the light, you can see it's sort of shining. And that detail in the back is just insane. Like there are icons, there's artwork in this deck that was in the church I was baptized in, that was in the church that I was married in. Like it's on another level. Like the artwork on these is insane. Like, do you, I, I can't, like it's metallic, what? These are some of the most beautiful cards I've ever seen. The artwork really resonates with me because it's something I grew up with. Uh, even though the some of the messages of Christianity don't really resonate with me that much. Um, you know, I have my opinions on the religion as a whole and how much harm that it's done to humanity, but 
I can deeply respect and connect with the artwork in these cards because it connects me back to my ancestors, to my grandparents, to my great grandparents, to my great great grandparents. And there's something about that energy that is just so special. And it reminds me of when I was, you know, very, very young. And while my mother wasn't religious and we didn't go to church on a regular basis, we would go to church when we came up to visit my grandparents for the holidays. So, I would be in this church and I would be bored to tears because the Orthodox services are so long and my little seven, eight, nine year old self was just so <clears throat> done after about half an hour <laughs> and I still had, you know, an hour to go. So I would look at the artwork. I would look at the icons that are all around you in an Orthodox church. And there's something so special about that memory for me because it was the first time I really remember sort of connecting with art. And I think it's part of the reason that I was, you know, called to the path of being an artist. This is so cool. Like I cannot believe I found this. And I looked it up on Amazon and apparently this deck is pretty rare. So I'm so happy that I was able to find it and I'm looking forward to doing some readings with it. It's got its own spread that you can do, um, but I'm looking forward to doing some readings with it because the descriptions in the little booklet that comes with this are surprisingly pretty open-ended. I really thought that it was going to be a little too connected to Christian imagery, but you can see you have a tiny little booklet here and it's translated into five different languages. So, you know, it's just got little blurbs like little tiny blurbs about the cards. So it leaves a lot open to intuitive interpretation. And I sort of like that because it doesn't tie you into one specific story or another. It just gives you a framework and lets the reader do, you know, the connecting of that framework to the Quirin's situation, which I definitely like in a tarot deck. So that's about it, you guys. That is everything that I picked up from the Crystal Fox. Now, I noticed while I was there, I didn't get one of these, but I noticed while I was there that there is, there are mystery bags that the Crystal Fox sells. Um, and they're somewhere between like $7.50 to $10. And they're just mystery bags. You never know what's gonna be in them. So I'm tempted to get one of those mystery bags and unbox it here on the channel for you guys. Let me know if that's something you would be interested in because I know you guys were digging the Sage Goddess mystery box unboxing, so I'm always down to do more of that. Unboxings have actually become really fun for me, so <clears throat> I think I will be doing more of those. They're very fun to do, and more importantly, they're easy to film and edit, so I'm not, you know, having to spend a crap ton of time that I don't have uh, having to splice things together and edit things and all that good stuff. But in the meantime, I hope you found this video helpful, informative, or entertaining. If you did, there's a button for that. Spank that like button in the butt. You know it deserves it. And if you want to see more from me, you've got a couple options now. You can click the videos on either side of my head, assuming I put them there, to binge if you're bored or bummed out. Or hey, you can hit that button that looks like my face and subscribe and become a member of the faithful. Today, I put out new videos every Sunday. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and joining me today and I'll see you in the next video. Toodles!